Oh, hey there. Good afternoon, YouTube community. It's your boy, Lex Anderson. And I'm just scrolling here through my notes because a couple of days ago, to my horror, Matthew Stafford became the highest paid player in the NFL. Oh, yeah. The guy who's never won a playoff game. And it seems that Aaron Rodgers finally woke up and is aware of what's going on with Colin Kaepernick. And I'm going to discuss why he needs to do something about it. This is your boy Lex Anderson. Welcome to the Sports Opinion Log. Hey guys and girls, good afternoon. It's your boy Lex Anderson back in the building. Feels good to be back. And again, special shout out, Al Rob, Desi Robin, citizens of Pittsburgh. You guys are the best. And speaking of football, what have we here? Matthew Stafford, he of the 0-3 playoff record, gets a contract extension, six years, $151 million, making him the highest paid player currently in NFL history, or at least uh, on a yearly basis from what I'm seeing here. Averaging what 25.25 million dollar per season, which is more than Derek Carr at 25 million and Andrew Luck at 24.6 million. Whew. Now the stats, it's just it's just the numbers, really. His agent is Tom Condon. Tom Condon. Remember that name. Matthew Stafford's agent, Tom Condon. Clients such as Drew Brees, Philip Rivers, and both the Manning brothers. Man, you can tell this guy's getting paid. And look at such a record setting contract Matthew Stafford's been given. Signing bonus of $50 million, $10 million more than Joe Flacco at $40 million. Fully guaranteed at $60.5 million surpassing the 59.95 million that was given to defensive tackle Dominic Sue Ooh, back in 2015. So let's see here, going through the stats, the most guaranteed money per contract belongs to these three NFL quarterbacks. Stafford, $92 million. Again, 0-3 in the playoffs. Andrew Luck, $87 million. 3-3 three and three in the playoffs. Derek Carr, $70 million. Zero and zero. Wow. You know, what's interesting is that I had read an article that said that the Lions were actually forced to give Matthew Stafford all this money. Matthew Stafford is trash. He is a bum. He might be good from a fantasy perspective, but in a real life, I'm a leader I can go into Green Bay and beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers? No. The most you'll get out of Matthew Stafford is the usual Thanksgiving Day win. That's about it. And unfortunately, if you're a Lions fan, that's all you really have to look forward to. Because the Lions suck. Of course, I'm not going to get into Megatron, aka Mega Trash, Mega Bum, Mega Failure at least for me on a fantasy level. But again, what was his playoff record? He didn't accomplish much in my eyes. And guess what? Current day, neither has Matthew Stafford. It's amazing that the Lions were forced into renegotiating his contract even though he had one year left on it. And if Matthew Stafford can command this kind of money, how are we feeling out there about that guy, uh, with the Redskins, Cousins, right? With the arbitration, guaranteed $23 million. I mean, like, why would Cousins complain? He's pocketed nearly 40 to $50 million in guaranteed money. But yet, the stigma of not having a long-term contract, the stigma of having that franchise tag slapped on your back and across your forehead just makes some guys feel... Like, they're not a part of the team, which is really sad when you consider how much money is being wasted on such subpar guys. And what does this say about college football? Can they not put out 
good quarterbacks, where mediocre quarterbacks are running away with this kind of money, like Tannehill, which I would get more into, but uh, I didn't really make this video for him, and I don't have any stats on hand. But another ripoff. It's amazing. I'm just sitting here perplexed at how someone as horrible as Matthew Stafford. Wow. But then again, the Dolphins have Jay Cutler, so maybe maybe it'll even out. You know, Stafford's thrown a couple of, you know, game-winning touchdown passes and stuff like that, but the NFL is judged by who's getting to the playoffs. And it might be a 53-man roster, but the number one position on any NFL team is the quarterback. And to me, Matthew Stafford does not fall into an elite category, ladies and gentlemen. So I cannot give him that those props, irregardless of what his contract says. So uh, Detroit Lions, oh yeah, and he's locked into this contract if he, you know, completes it into 2022. So Detroit Lions, Lions fans, have fun with your mediocre quarterback because ain't nothing going on. Well, you're going to have what's been going on. What's been going on with Matthew Stafford will continue. This contract will not propel him to greatness. Speaking of great, let's switch the topics or switch subjects. Aaron Rodgers. Again, white privilege is, is that you're granted and given leeway in certain things. So Aaron Rodgers, I would like to personally thank you for waking up, smelling the coffee. The coffee being society, that Aaron Rodgers just now realizing that maybe Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a position on the NFL roster is because of the stance that he took. Well, thank you, discount double check. I can go to bed and sleep well at night knowing that Aaron Rodgers finally woke up to the reality of uh, Kaepernick's situation. But hey, discount double check. How about doing something about it? Maybe you should, instead of speaking into the microphone for, you know, that sports network, why don't you go upstairs why don't you knock on the door of the owner, of the general manager, of your head coach, and say, hey, you know what? I would like Colin Kaepernick to be a backup quarterback here in Green Bay for my Green Bay Packers. So Aaron Rodgers, he of the discount double check, he of the myriad of many commercials, he who is exalted for some reason as being better than Tom Brady, who I despise because he's a cheater on all levels, be it video footage or the flight gate. Brady gets the job done, albeit despite the circumstances surrounding it. But again, that is also white privilege. Because you best believe if there was an African-American coach who did that spy gate, he would be coaching, what, Division One. Well, maybe he might be, would fall to an NCAA level, but there would definitely be some blacklisting by the NFL if there was an African-American head coach who did the devious cheating things that, you know, Belichick and Brady have been so fortunate and so blessed and so privileged to be given to them where they could win five Super Bowls together. Best coach, QB duo in NFL history, blah, blah, blah. So Aaron Rodgers, yes, football is a team sport. Yes, you don't have a running game. Yes, your defense or the Green Bay Packers defense is lackluster and subpar. But hey, you know what? The season hasn't started yet. Anything can happen. But what should be happening is Aaron Rodgers should be going to his front office and seeing if Kaepernick could get a spot that he deserves. Be it a backup, a spot's a spot, right? Beggars can't be choosing. Excuse me, beggars can't be choosy. So Aaron Rodgers, I would like to see you do the right thing. Contact the front office.
get Kaepernick back in the NFL uniform. And speaking of doing the right thing, I'm just going to end it with a little uh, prayers to the people out there affected by Hurricane Harvey out there in the Houston area. My prayers are with you. People that I do know have been personally affected by this, um, by this storm, by this hurricane. Lives upturned, um, complete upheavals. Prayers to the people in Houston, those that I do personally know, I've been reaching out to on social media, and this is when social media is used as a platform for good. I saw something about Kevin Hart issuing a $25,000 challenge with celebrities have been picking up and donating more and more. Some have been surpassing the $25,000, which is good because I believe in zero expectations. You can't expect anything from anyone, but shout out to the celebrities getting involved. Um, however, I'm gonna give a thumbs down right here. James Harden, Houston Rockets, $228 million contract. I've been checking your Twitter, James Harden. I haven't seen any tweets of you donating. I haven't seen any retweets, any posts going on from James Harden, Houston Rockets, $228 million. Would you like to maybe contribute out there to the people in Houston? You know, the team, the city, the state upon which you put on the uniform, because that's what you get paid to do. You get paid to put on the sneakers, you know, those crappy Adidas sneakers that you, uh, you know, that you shill for people to wear, your shorts, your jersey, whatever magnetic tape you put over your shoulder and stuff like that. You think that magnetic tape could maybe reach out to a pin, write a nice check for the people out there in Houston who really could use and need the help out there, James Harden? Hopefully, you'll do the right thing to some people, I tell you. But that is just my opinion. And that's all I have for this segment. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls of the YouTube community, I thank you right here very much for tuning in. Subscriptions, they are very much welcome. And they're needed. I need you to subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit me up so I can give you a shout out. Be a part of the show. I'm here. I thank you. And I welcome you. Comments. Play some. Shares. Even better. Put the word out. Let them know that your boy Lex Anderson is back. The Sports Opinion Log is getting ready to roll because NFL season is right around the corner. College football starts this Saturday. Go Ducks. You know how we do. And until next time, this is your boy Lex Anderson, and I'm signing out.